And uh, one exercise we do with the kids is we'll tell them, OK, now can you switch off these two pixels? So you see um, a white, let's say, figure with two white dots in the middle. So we ask them, how do you go in and make them switch them off? And this is also the question I ask to you. So who is going to volunteer to switch this off? What do I have to change to switch these two uh, white pixels? I don't see any hands raised. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't want the technical person to answer. <laughs> Maybe an educator or uh, any volunteers, or I let Arthur answer. Uh, I guess we go to the. Can I say actually? I didn't ask. Yes, yes, go ahead, Sophia. Uh, I said to do the two whites into black, correct? Yes, these two here. Yes. Uh, so we go to the third line in the fourth and fifth W and do it mm -hmm. black. B. Yes, exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, correct. So if I replace this two B with, uh, sorry, W with B, then in the next uh, time I run this, um, then these are switched off. A good question would be to how you can change all the white with black and all the yes. black with white easily. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, this is a good question. And maybe someone else can answer. Um, who is online? Maybe Rene? I assume if there is any command that uh, do a replacement, replace B with uh, W, something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that could work, but there's an easier way. Maybe we can just yes. switch the letters. B in the place of W and W in the place of B. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yes, as we said, the computer doesn't care or understand. It just, as long as its syntax is correct, then uh, that should work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I think now it looks better like an astronaut. So <laughs> if we switch this back to W, or black, then mm. it should be more clear what was the intention. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK, great. So we have um, uh, done this exercise as well. As I said, this is um, there's a lot of things that you can build upon these simple examples. As I said, this is uh, you can introduce them into arrays because this actually from the programming language perspective is a it's a, it's a one dimensional array, although we use it like a two dimensional here. In essence, as I said, we can put everything in a single line and it will be just be an array of 64 elements. And that's all, the eight by eight. And uh, what we already did, like, you know, understanding what is the semantics of it. And of course, you can go and change the colors. Um, and this will be, you can build many things. The, the next Typically, the next, uh, let's say, um, exercise is to actually create their own images. So we ask them to think what is the what do they want to depict. They can have a paper array like a 64 by 64 diagram. They can start filling with their colors they like, and then they have to transfer this to a computer. So it's a very manual way to digitize an image. Um, there are many things you can build up on this to um, to create something new. Uh, I think we can stop here just because of the time constraints. Were there any more any questions up to now? It's, was it clear and interesting? I hope. Yes, it's it's clear. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Adams. The rest of the exercises, they, let's say, progressively, they go into more, let's say, technical depth. Like the next exercises, um, you actually get the, this sense, you, 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 you are reading the, the sensor values. Here, the sensor values are emulated, like you see here. Uh, but in a real Raspberry, uh, with the sense hat, you get the, the room temperature and the, and the room humidity. But here you can simulate this. Um, 
And maybe I can just run um, here as a simple example. Um, yes, I, I'll just show you this just as a demo here. Just to see how it will look. Just to get your, uh, let's say, interest. Um, so if you obviously I just copy paste now, but if you take the time to build all of this um, exercise here. So in this exercise, which is activity um, six, you you have introduced all the rest. So now you have uh, many colors, which later on you use to create different images. So these images is what you see here as well. This is a snowflake, it's a fish and so on. And then you start to read, uh, you introduce the variables of the sensors. You do some, let's say, additional programming to round them off so they look nice on screen. And, and then you have the, you introduce the if statements. Um, and you also have um, in the next um, exercise, you also add the, you can also add the wild commands. So in this example here, when you run, you have also introduced the conditional commands. So depending on what we have here, which is obviously very hot and uh, humid, you see uh, the sun, which is depending on the, the high temperature, and you see the fish which corresponds to the uh, high humidity. You can do this in a, in a while loop, so it, it repeats and also changes while we change the, the temperatures. So that's, uh, let's say more or less, I will just stop here because I, I, we could talk for hours for this, but let's um, stay to this for now and hopefully we can get a chance to see this also in practice. So that's, that's all for me. Any other final questions? Thank you very much, Antonis. Thank you, Antonis, very interesting. So Thank how uh, the students are working directly on the emulator and then they uh, transfer their scripts to the um, physical device. Is this a process? Uh, yes, yes. Um, normally you have um, either one or the other. Um, uh -huh. Because um, uh, let's say in what we have done, let's say in, in practice in Cyprus where Martina was uh, mentioned already, the students were in the classroom in front of a computer and they were using the emulator, so you could guide them at the same time. Um, to, to use the actual device, this is a bit more advanced. You can, you can connect, uh, you can use the same device, the, the mm -hmm. Raspberry device, as Nicola said, it's a computer. So you mm -hmm. can connect a screen and a keyboard to it and you are ready to go, you can open the pie, a text editor and write directly to that and comp like compile directly. And you have the Raspberry Pi showing what you have done. Mm -hmm. So you have, it's like you have a computer already. Uh, what you what you execute here, it will be shown directly in your physical device. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, because it's, uh, it needs a, a lot, well, it'll, I wouldn't say a lot, but it needs more effort and preparation. You need to have a device per team or per student. Hardware devices, hardware is always harder <laughs> uh, to set up correctly and uh, work with it. So it depends on the level of students. For, for the level of students we're discussing, which is uh, secondary education, I would think that this is how it should work on the hardware devices, actually. The, what we showed here, <coughs> it was in primary school and also to uh, first classes of uh, high school, so not really our. Um, so you could, depending on the audience and how um, what is their skills, let's say, you can use the hardware device. Hardware devices are harder, but it's, it's always much nicer and much more uh, impactful because the student can see what they have programmed in a real object right on a screen, and it's very more, let's say. Um, the experience is much better, let's say, as I'm sure you all have.